Up next on Utah Business Matters, Casper's Ice Cream. You probably know them better as Fat Boy. Coming up on 100 years of serving up deliciously tasty ice cream treats. Utah Business Matters is up next. And welcome to Utah Business Matters as we come to you today from the Cache Valley, the home of great businesses like Casper's Ice Cream. You know them better as Fat Boy. You've had them, so have I. What a neat opportunity today for us to get to know and better understand the tradition of Casper's and Fat Boy as they give us a tour of their operations and talk about the history here in Richmond. Casper Merrill graduated from Utah State in 1925 in dairy science. Him and his older brother uh, started toying with uh, making ice cream, taking the cream from the milk. It was quite a process back then. They had to cut ice blocks during the winter and store them in a shed with sawdust and straw and then take the ice and make an ice and brine solution and take the cream from the cows and add the sugar and the other ingredients to make the ice cream and then they would freeze it into big blocks. And then they would take the ice cream and cut the big blocks into small rectangular squares. And they didn't have popsicle sticks at that time. And so they would take meat skewers, the pointed meat skewers, and, and put them into the rectangular ice cream. And then they'd dip it in warm melted chocolate, roll it in peanuts. Then they'd take and stack those bars back into a 10 gallon milk can around the edge of the milk can on the inside and then they put that milk can into a barrel, a wood barrel, and put ice and salt solution around the milk can and then they would load those barrels up onto the wagon and drive into, you know, drive the horses and wagon into the local towns surrounding their, their farm. In the 30s, on a good day, he could make 45 dozen ice cream bars and it didn't just go smoothly for him, he had to figure it out along the way and he had to try half gallons and figure out that it was hard to compete against the big boys with half gallons and so he went more the novelty direction. If I can give something different to people that they've never seen before, you know, people can get an ice cream tub, a tub of ice cream, but can they get a nut sundae on a stick? My father was a professor at Iowa State. As an eight-year-old boy, we would take a freezer in a van and we would load it up with nut sundaes, dozens, and we'd drive through the neighborhoods of Ames, Iowa, and I'd sell, sell ice cream door to door. I got that entrepreneurial spirit ingrained into me at a young age. When people would say, oh, I'm not interested in buying it, he told me to open the box, let them try a bar for free. And if they liked it, they could buy the box. And if they didn't, you know, next, you'd go to the next door. And uh, nine times out of 10, if they tried the product, they'd buy the box. They were outgrowing their facility here in Logan and invited my dad to come back to, to Logan, Utah and help build a ice cream factory on family owned property in Richmond, Utah. I was living the life of, of working and, and watching my father and grandfather build a business from the, virtually from the time I was 10. Casper invented the machinery and built it himself from wrapping machines to the ice cream freezer to anything that it took to make these novelties on a large scale. So one of the key uh, moments in the history of our company was when Casper designed and developed his own continuous freezer. What I mean by continuous freezer is the ice cream mix gets incorporated into the back of the freezer drum and there's a valve on the front of the freezer drum that keeps the drum under pressure. Ice cream mix comes in, you add air, the right amount of air you freeze and scrape and you do that continuously. So the mix comes in runny at the back, ice cream comes out frozen at the front. We were able to build a, a plant that was big enough to service the Western United States, the Southeast, the Northeast, the Midwest, and currently we're shipping product to 26 states and our products uh, cross borders and show up in about 40 states. I don't know, I've just never thought of really doing anything else other than uh, working in the the manufacturing facility and making great fat boy products and and marketing them to the to the people in in the United States and beyond. But Casper uh, wanted to make 
a thicker than usual ice cream sandwich with more ice cream between the two cookies. So he developed uh, equipment that would run a square ice cream sandwich and we just called it a generic ice cream sandwich. It was just uh, Casper's ice cream, ice cream sandwich. Well, in the 70s, we came up with the name Fat Boy. We said, oh, you know, our sandwich is bigger than anything out there. You know, let's call it the Fat Boy. We kind of had a slogan called uh, Fat Boy. He's big, he's good. We didn't actually put that product name to use until 1984. At that time, we were making 80% Nut Sunday to 20% Fat Boy. And within a short period of time of naming the sandwich a Fat Boy, that switched to where we were making 80% Fat Boy sandwiches and 20% uh, Nut Sunday, and that's about the ratio we're at today. Some of the hard things about running a business like ours is the sales and marketing. How do you take a product that's well known in the Western United States and take it to the South or the East or the Midwest and, and have people grab, grab onto your product, try it. But our experience has been once people try our product, they love it and they continue to buy it. One of our great success stories is we went into a grocery store chain in, in Florida five years ago and they've become our number one customer in five short years with the amount of volume of product they sell. The Fatboy products have always been the most premium ingredients and we are a, a high butterfat ice cream product. And so many of our competitors, the, the large companies out there, have taken and cheapened their product up to stay competitive, to, to keep prices low, but what we found and, and seen research to back this up is that when people want to eat ice cream and they want to indulge and treat themselves to, to an ice cream treat, they want the good stuff. When we come back on Utah Business Matters, we continue with the tradition of Casper's and Fat Boy. Welcome back to Utah Business Matters as we report today from the Cache Valley, specifically Richmond, Utah. We continue now on our great tour of the Fat Boy Ice Cream Factory and talk about the tradition and history of making Fat Boys. You get your taste in ice cream from two things, fat and sugar. And so you have to have a little bit of that in a product to have it taste good. And we, we like the fact that our recipe has not changed since Casper started making ice cream in 1925. My grandfather, Casper Merrill, spent 70 plus years in the business. My father, Derwin, spent 30 plus years in the business. Uncle Richard and Uncle George, two of my uncles, spent their lifetime starting as little boys and built the business. We have 55 employees. This, this area that we live is such a great area to draw on great employees that come in and eat, drink, and sleep. How do I make Fat Boy products better? How do we sell them and market them better? How do we help grow the company? And I just have so many employees and family that have gone before me to be appreciative of and, and thank for all the tireless hours that have been spent growing this company to what it is today. We produce roughly between uh, 22 and, and 27 million novelty bars a year. You know, that's, that's over 200 semi-loads full of novelty products. So you can guess that takes quite a bit of ingredients to go into that. We try to buy all of our ingredients that we can in Utah. So we try to buy our ingredients, our packaging, and everything that we can from Utah companies. We buy our milk from local dairies. We use a lot of milk. It would take a herd of 400 to 600 cows to produce the amount of milk that we take. We sometimes buy 80,000 80, pounds of milk in a week. Uh, the wafers, the, the ice cream wafers that go on the sandwiches, you know, if you make 20 million sandwiches a year, fat boys, 
you, you have to cover them with 40 million wafers. And so that takes several truckloads of wafers. Uh, the sugar, the butter, we, we buy semi loads of butter that goes in to give us the butter fat level that we need. So it's exciting to make the products that we make, the Fat Boy products, but in doing so, help other Utah businesses be successful. In our ice cream uh, manufacturing facility is, is running at, at uh, about 40% capacity. We're excited to grow. We've uh, got our sales and marketing team lined up to, to give us you know, 15 to 20% growth a year. Uh, that's our goal. And hopefully we'll be able to continue expanding into markets that we're not in. We'll be able to continue to grow the markets that we're currently in. We're so grateful to the Utah community that supports us. Uh, approximately 25% of our products that we make are consumed in the Utah and Southern Idaho market. And so that just really shows how much we enjoy making product for the citizens of Utah and Southern Idaho and how much they enjoy uh, consuming and, and eating our Fat Boy products. The big question always is, are you gonna grow this company and pass it to the fourth generation or are you going to sell it to another company? Well, right now, just having a thriving, medium-sized company in the third generation is defying all odds. I've heard that businesses that were started that remain family, private-owned businesses the amount of businesses that have made it to the third generation is down around the two to three percent level. So we're already defying the odds of a business surviving in the third generation. Whether it goes to the fourth generation, it's too soon to tell. We're doing this interview here in a malt shop that we built back in 2006, kind of as a tribute to Casper Merrill. Uh, he used to sell out of the front of his factory and we still sell out of our factory today in a, in a second location. But we really wanted to have a place that was nice, that, that people could come and sit and enjoy eating Casper's ice cream, both the hard ice cream we make, we make for the public as well as eating our novelty bars. But, but the older generation can come and sit and bring their kids and their grandkids, treat them to an ice cream and tell them a little bit about the history of how they enjoyed Casper's ice cream and the Fat Boy products from the time they were little kids. It's very satisfactory to be part of a, of a company that my grandfather started making a few dozen ice cream bars a day. To what you see now, we have three production lines. Each production line has capabilities of running 120 bars a minute. And so we can make several thousand dozen in a day and it's just very satisfying to, to have been part of helping build a company and watch my father, my uncles, my grandfather build equipment and buy equipment and have the engineering type mind to be able to make the production lines, uh, construct the production lines that help us make thousands of novelty bars a day for people to enjoy. Our products are sold primarily in the grocery stores and the club stores, but we also sell through convenience stores and we're also starting to market and look at uh, food service, restaurants, hospitals, schools, amusement parks, uh, places like that. It's just fun to, to drive around the country and stop by a little place where you'd never expect to see our product and there's a fat boy. Hawaii consumes a lot of our Fat Boy products. And from Hawaii, they get put back on containers and shipped to the Samoan Islands. And so from Samoa, Fiji, the Hawaiian Islands, to Alaska, West Coast to the East Coast, we sell to the military so the military folks can enjoy our products in Guam, Germany, Korea, and other places around the world. It's quite satisfactory to know that Fat Boy products are touching people's lives around the globe. Fat Boy Products, life never tasted so good.